My father always told me, observe, my son, observe carefully, so you don't have to make the mistakes others make. And so I learned to observe carefully, precisely. And especially I learned to observe groups and the unwritten rules in groups. When you enter a group and you know it from school, you know it from business, you know it from new countries, the unwritten rules are the most important ones. How do you behave to belong? How do you behave to become an affiliated and to be integrated? And how does a group exclude you? And I learned this and I looked, I looked for patterns how to do it. So this became my business as well. I jump into companies, into cultures, and I look at the unwritten rules and then we change them. We change them to the favor of the company because the unwritten rules are very often the problem in organizations. That, for instance, you may complain and do not have to deliver solutions. That you be, may be negative and without energy in meetings and make an hour without any output. Unwritten rules. And today I want to share with you the unwritten rules of authority and dominance in business. Authority and dominance in business. I learned to read them and I learned to copy them. But before we go into it, because it's a very sensitive topic, I want to give you a moral lesson on it. Because if I give you a powerful tool, you always need some moral background for it. Otherwise, you cannot deal with it properly. What is power? And how is it connotated in our society? Actually, it's very negative. I, when I talk about power, Macht, in German, where a lot of people say, ah, Macht and power, it's something negative. I don't want Macht, I don't want power. We all should be the same. Yes, in a perfect world, yes. But past has shown that human beings need power and they always create hierarchy, no matter what happens. Communism, for instance, is a really nice concept. I'm really, it's a morally nice concept. I'm really a fan of it. The only thing is, you cannot apply it to human beings because they need structure and they need hierarchy, they need superior and inferior, they need people who lead and they need people who follow. Please try it out. Put, put a lot of people who just follow in a team and see the output. They won't take decisions and they will block themselves. They will hope for somebody who takes over power. And power comes with a price, of course, nada por nada. It comes with a price. Because power and responsibility and ownership, the correlation coefficient is one. That means the moment you have power, you're responsible. So it's not a por for na uh, nada por nada. It's nothing for nothing. So you need to deliver something for it. Power is a tool. Power is a powerful tool you're wearing on your belt. And how you deal with it depends on your morals. So power has no value itself. It becomes something through the person using or abusing it. Some people use it in favor to make the world a better place, and some people abuse it for them selfish, for their selfish reasons, and to really present themselves and demonstrate themselves in a bad way. Why is power corrupting people since ever? You give people power, and most of them, I think more than 90%, are corrupted by it. That, may, that means they give up their idealism, they give up their values, they give up the good intentions they had before. Hugo Chavez, yeah? or in Cuba, or you can see a lot of people who gained power and suddenly became the evil themselves. Why is this? Because people are not stable and they don't know themselves. So there should be some obligation coming with power in the future to make it better. And it is consciousness. Consciousness and reflection. The moment you gain power, you have to be conscious about yourself, about your self-esteem issues, about your anger, about your personality. To really not abuse power and use it for the good. So first of all, I wanted to state this, that power is not something negative. It is nothing. It becomes something through you. Are you not conscious? You will probably be corrupted by it. Are you conscious? You all the time will have the reflection, hmm, would I do this 
even though I have so good intentions, or do I just feel, yeah, now I can do everything, so I will abuse it because I can. And now we go into it. The signs of dominance and authority. What is authority, by the way? As a first a def definition of terms. Authority is the legitimate power given to you by a group. That means a group says, Sebastian, you are the authority in signs of dominance, like now, so we will listen to you in this field. So it is given to you. Authority is given to you by people. While dominance is something you take. Dominance means you're having a superior social status to others. You cannot be superior if there aren't inferiors. I was asked by Miriam in the, in the interview before, uh, 30 minutes ago, she was asking, yeah, uh, but isn't as a inferior? Is it, is it always ne necessary to have power? It is in groups that someone takes ownership, takes power over. You you must not call it power, but you can call it ownership. And everybody is in favor of ownership. In favor of power are just a few. So status, superior social status. Are these people successful? You will ask yourselves. If they do it smartly, yes. I work mainly on board level, C level, and C minus one level. And believe me, all these people up there, they have authority given by their position itself. And of course, they behave dominant, not all the time, but in very selected moments, they show alpha behavior. And I want to give you now a very behavioral approach to this alpha behavior. How do you behave? that those people see you as a part of their group and do not exclude you instantly, that you are virtual. Yeah, They say, no, you're part of them. You're an alpha as well. And I needed to do this. I needed to learn this behavior. I tell you why. If I want to create or support a new culture in an organization, I need to be the dominant one. And I need to be the authority. Otherwise, people don't follow me and tell and start to behave differently in the organization. That means the first step is I need to be the dominant in the room. And the people I deal with, believe me, they are no weaklings. They are not Wurstel. So they start to attack me first and see if they take any advice from me and because they want to check if I'm courageous and dominant and strong enough. So this is how I approach the topic in the first time. And now we go into the things. Now we go into the signs of dominance. You won't find them in literature. We invented them so you can criticize them and you won't find scientific foundation for it. For all the compulsive Austrians, I'm sorry. But they work because I'm pragmatic and what works, I use. So here we go, signs of dominance. How do you perceive a person dominant or an authority when the person enters the room? Think for a second. Reflect for a second. If you had a seminar, for instance, remember the situation. 10, 12 different people enter the room. How do you feel differently already in the moment when they pass the door? How do you know one is more important, more superior, and the other one is less important? How do you know I'm afraid of this person a little bit more and less afraid of this person? Think of it. I will give you now the rules for it. And what do the rules do? The rules will disarmor the behavior. Because the moment you understand what the person is doing and why, this moment you will lose the emotion connected to it. That means if somebody goes into the room, and we train this with my 20 trainers, we train this all the time. Somebody's coming in the room, attacking you in front of the group to show uh, that he or she is an alpha as well, mostly he. We train the situation, and just by training it, people and all my trainers are conscious of the situation. Conscious means they know they are in a training situation, and the other one wants to stay the alpha in the room. Just by this consciousness, they react cool. Because the moment you know it's a game, you play the game, and you're not personally offended anymore. And believe me, almost everything is a game. Learn how to play it instead of judging it just because you don't know the rules. And here are some rules. How do people enter the room who seem to be an authority, who seem to be dominant? Very simple. 
First room. They enter the room directly into the center of the room. So if two people enter differently, one is like uh, close to the wall and doesn't like to cross the center of the room and the other person goes straight through the room. If the dominant person comes too late and I'm the trainer, the person comes in, walks towards me, shakes my hand, interrupting the training and says, sorry, Sebastian, I'm too late, I'm just Steve. And the not dominant person tries to slip into the training without being noticed. What else? Posture. Power posture means energetic posture. You're ready to fight. It's not like this. I want to, yes, I want to tell you about power and authority today. I have a 20 slide PowerPoint with me. I learned at the University of Psychology. Of course, this is not power. This is power. You stand there, you have Körperspannung, you have tension in your body. This is power. And I move all the time. Next thing. Körperspannung, body language. Next thing, how much space do you take in presentations or in conversations? How big is your body language? People who are dominant and gain authority use bigger body language, use more space around them. I show it to you. Um, first of all, I want to show you the signs of dominance. Then I would like to go into something else. And thirdly, I don't know. Or... First of all, we go into the signs of dominance. Second of all, I want to show you the body language that leads to it. And third, you see the big movements, big movements, dominant, small movements. Da, 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 da. How much space do I dare to take? Just like this, because I, don't, I do not deserve more? Or do I have the deep inner conviction? Ooh, this is my space. One, two, three. Yeah. So how much space do you take? You got it already. First of all, how do you enter a room? Do you cross the center? Do you stay at the uh, edge of the room? Second of all, how much space do you take while you talk body language wise? Third of all, and now we go into deep, and you will recognize this behavior on board level, I promise it to you, or on high management level. Eyeball speed is something we define. Eyeball speed. How quickly do you move your eyeballs, says how dominant you are. Um, what I would like to uh, go into it uh, first is um, the signs of dominance. Bullet point one, signs of dominance. Do you feel the difference? First of all, I moved my eyes a lot. What does it mean? I tell you, we are all animals. It means that I want to get away, I want to escape flight mode. Yeah, uh, uh, I would really like to talk about the signs of dominance, or you just lock down your eyes. Tsk. Eyeball speed low equals dominance. So, if I have a group, I, I quickly look at them, or I slowly lock, 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 lock me in. Third, eyeball speed. First, how you enter the room. Second, how much space do you take while you talk. Third, eyeball speed. Four, I give you a lot. The good thing is I can give you a lot because under stress it won't work. You need to train this. So if you really want to use it and execute it, you need to train it. And what do you need to train it? Stress, stress, stress. Because without stress, it's very easy to keep the eye eyeball speed low. Without stress, it's very easy to... Uh, use your body language in a certain size. Under stress, you will see you go numb, you go dumb. It all, you forget everything and you can't use it. This is why you need people who stress you in a secure framework called training. People who stress you in a secure framework and suddenly you will reproduce the behavior under stress in the real world. Next point. Eye contact plus one. Eye contact plus one. There's a culturally accepted endurance of eye contact and you exceed it by one second. For instance, in Austria it's like three seconds, you may look into each, other, each other's eyes without saying something before it becomes uncomfortable. I show it to you. So, if you were a person now, you would feel slowly uncomfortable. So what do I do? 
I stay in eye contact, but we're still not on Reumann Platz fighting. Yeah? It's not like uh, we look at each other and who, stay, who looks away win, uh, loses. It's, it's business. It's business that means we just show a glimpse of our power. That means I look at you without saying anything, and then I stay one second too long to show you I could stare at you, but I decide not to. Eye contact plus one, with no eyeball speed, not moving the eyeballs at all. You stay in eye contact, and you stay one second too much. And this becomes uncomfortable, and then you look away. So the person, you can really feel it physiologically, the person's heartbeat goes up, the blood pressure goes up, the person feels you could be dangerous, but you decide to be friendly. And this is what dominance is. I will take a short uh, sidestep, not to go through it too structuredly, because I don't like it. Who do you respect when two people come to a fight? Who do you respect more? Who do you think is the dominant one, the one who deserves authority? One comes naked. Let's make him wear pants to complete the picture. One is coming naked and says, please, I want peace, please. And the other one comes to the fight in a long black leather jacket. <laughs> and the guy opens up the leather jacket, and in the leather jacket there are guns, hand grenades, a bazooka, Kalashnikov, everything. And he closes down the leather jacket again and says, but I want peace, please. Who do you respect more? Of course, the guy who could do differently. Because for this guy, it's a conscious decision to have peace, while the other guy has no option. So the other guy isn't even a pacifist. It's just his only choice to have peace because he has no other option. And we respect people who said, I could kill you, I could beat you up, I could fire you, and I decide not to. Because this is far more reliable than the naked guy. The naked guy, maybe if you give a gun to the naked guy, he becomes a really aggressive guy shooting people. He's just that pacifist because he has no other choice. While the one, the one with the gun, he knows how to kill people, he knows how to do it, but he decides for peace. And I want to give you an analogy for this. What is the black long leather jacket in the world? Where do you see it all the time? Who's doing this all the time? It's world politics. Who is doing this? United States of America, Russia, North Korea. Why do we have 13,000 plus nuclear weapons in the world to use them? Of course not, we're not stupid and suicidal. But why do we have 13,000 nuclear weapons in the world for this? Look. I could kill us all, but I won't. And then the U.S. says, I could kill us three times, but I won't. This is how it works. Like it or not, I'm pragmatic. I don't care if you like it, but this is how it works. So, what am I telling you? And what were the first five points, uh, signs of dominance? It was exactly this. Eye contact plus one is, I could have a conflict, but I choose not to. Eyeball speed too quickly, tsk. I'm ready to fight, but I choose not to. I take a lot of space because I think I deserve it, and I cross the room in the center because I know I can. So, next thing. I want to show you what's most important, and I show it to my friends when we go out, that people are not free. You can steer people very easily. For instance, if I want somebody from the other side of the room to come towards me, I look at him like this. Then the guy comes over and I say, sorry, sorry, I was just looking at the picture behind you. And he walks away again. And I do it again. And he says, what's up with you? You're looking at me. I say, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the picture. I don't know what's the problem. And he walks away again. I can do it three times. And you don't tell me that people are free. I look at you like this, and you know we're in a fight mode. So what is the key to dominance? The key to dominance is consciousness of your own behavior and the speed how you can change it. 
because how can I steer the guy from the other side of the room? But a quick change of my behavior. Now I'm stupid and provoking. Eh. And now suddenly I'm super friendly. And I do it so quickly that he's irritated. Because normally people can't change their emotions so quickly. If I'm angry, I stay angry for an hour. And if I'm happy, I stay happy. But the, the speed of emotional change is one of the strongest signs of dominance. Because it means I am in charge of my emotions. My emotions are not in charge of me. I'm in charge of my ego. My ego is not in charge of me. And this is Dominus, I'm the boss. Dominus, der Herr in German. The master, Dominus, dominant, means I'm the boss of my emotions. I'm the boss of my ego. That means I can instantly go angry, but not because you provoke me, because I choose to. I'm dominant towards myself. And through this, of course, I'm dominant towards yourself. Because if I look at it like this, you come towards me and think, Sebastian, what kind of asshole are you? And then suddenly I'm super friendly and they say, oh, oh he's likable anyways. I walk away again and then I, I get you another time. How do you do this? Next step, signs of dominance. Next bullet point. Eight minutes left. Next bullet point. How do you keep your face and your head posture? Super friendly. I'm Sebastian. Now probably I will be liked in Austria when I start like this. And then pro I need to say something self-ironic, like my childhood was shit, and what did I take out of it? And, and the people connect with me. Because I show some vulnerabilities, I show some weaknesses. Austrians like this. Maybe I'm a little bit modest. Yeah, my company during COVID, we really lost a lot of revenue. Okay, then they connect with me. But who is free, you or me? Now you need to like me because I have this mimics and this behavior. And suddenly you need to dislike me because I behave like this. We increase revenue. We're getting fucking rich during COVID. Now suddenly you dislike me because I break your value of modesty. And I want to show you what is dominance. In the first step, dominate yourself before you dominate others. To dominate yourself, you need to see where you're not free. Start to consciously cause likability and dislikability, uh, uh, people liking you and people disliking you, and play with it. Play with it to learn how you do it. And don't be a victim of always wanting to being liked, because this is what dominant people, by the way, don't. They learned that they don't need to be liked. Because what's the price of getting up in the hierarchy in corporates? What's the price making a million a year? It's loneliness. It's loneliness. The higher you get up, the less you can go into the coffee kitchen and talk to people without any bad intentions because they have them. If you make a million and you're the CEO, believe me, everybody wants something from you. If you're Jeff Bezos, he can't talk to anybody on an event because everybody wants something from him. And maybe the smart ones don't show it in the first year and the stupid ones after five minutes, but at the very end he needs to be suspicious. And suspicious means he can't open up. And he can't open up means he is lonely. So the price of the top is loneliness. Next sign of dominance, you can bear the loneliness. You do not need to affiliate to a group and you show it that you do it consciously. You could if you would, if you wanted, but you don't because you decide not to. For instance, if you look at the last 24 minutes, I broke a lot of rules here. And this is perceived differently, even by the people in the room here. I can feel it. Something, oh, this guy is too bold. He's too showing off. He should be more modest. Or others say, cool, finally a guy who says the things as they are. Look at your emotion at the moment. And don't judge me. Judge yourself. What does it tell you about yourself, your emotions towards myself in the last 24 minutes? And then get into dominance, meaning you dominate your emotion, not myself through my behavior. Next step, signs of dominance, getting a little bit more likable again. Next step, sign of, signs of dominance. How do you say the names of people? The names of people are a key to dominance. What's your name? Let's say Stefan. Yeah? Steve, let's say it in English. The way I say Steve, I can dominate you. Because from your early childhood on, you were steered by your name. Steve. 
and then you need a very quick change. I will show it to you. Name tough, going weak very quickly. It works. So, if I want to dominate you very quickly, I say it like this. Raphael, thank you for your contributions. I really want you. Raphael, thank you for your contributions. I really. What happens if I say, Raphael, what is the memory Raphael has? Childhood. Mommy is coming and I did something wrong. And believe me, this works until the end of your life. It even works with your last name. Mr. Dreichel, you as a CEO, and what's the most important thing? The change in emotion. Because you kick, boom, Raphael. And you go down with your face like, Raphael. And then you change very quickly into the positive. Raphael, thanks for your contributions. I would like to, and I'm super, super nice. And the quick change of emotion doesn't let Raphael feel, boom, the hit into the liver. Raphael. Thank you for your contributions. And the, the speed how you can change the emotion is dominance. Because what does it say on an unconscious level to everybody? Sebastian is in charge of his emotions. Sebastian is in charge of his emotions. He can instantly change the emotion from fight, kill, to super friendly. That means he's unpredictable. Unpredictable means I cannot relax in his surrounding. I need to pay attention. And this is how I keep attention up. Because people don't know what to expect. In one second, everything can change in the room. How do you spell and pronounce the name of others? Raphael, thank you very much. This was now very friendly. Raphael, now we have a problem. Yeah? Raphael, that means the head goes down. I can show it to you. Raphael, thank you for your contribution. As it's, it's the head goes down a little bit. It's a very animal sign of we have a problem. We have a problem. Now we have a problem I want to discuss. We have a problem. Now I want to fight. It's just a few centimeters that make the difference, like very often in life. You go down, you go up. What else is another sign of dominance? Word fluency under stress. Word fluency under stress is the Champions League. Yeah? And this is the good thing. I can tell it to you because almost nobody manages it. Word fluency under stress. That means you are under attack and you stay word fluent. There's no uh, 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 stuttering. Uh, uh, oh. I can tell it to you. I can show it to you in a second how I lose all my authority over here as the master of the signs of dominance. Um, at the, uh, Jana, we have uh, two minutes left. Uh, I would like at, at, so at the end I, to sum it up. I'm gone. No authority, no dominance anymore. Word fluency under stress. How word fluent do you stay under stress? And now look again the entire video and look how often did I stutter. I think three times in 30 minutes. And what happened meanwhile? The snow plug was over there, some phone went off, somebody was opening the door, a lot of distractions and I stayed word fluent. There was stress and I stayed word fluent. This is the master discipline. Everybody's looking at you, you're under attack, and you stay word fluent under stress. And, to give, I have one minute left, also in your movements, stay fluent. That means, uh, no, entire movements to the end. Yeah? Don't cut your movements, it's the same like stuttering in a body language way. So it's also body language under stress. Body language fluency under stress. Word fluency under stress, body language uh, fluency under stress. Use the room. And this was my lesson and this was my insight into dominance and authority. Don't abuse it, guys. It's a powerful tool and thank you.